Consider this. In 1964, Sidney Poitier became the first African-American to win an Academy Award for Best Actor for his performance in Lilies of the Field. But the following year, Laurence Olivier would appear in blackface to play Othello, for which he received his seventh Best Actor nomination. I think, how bizarre. So there's Laurence Olivier and there's Sidney Poitier. It was a, it's not long ago at all, no. That's right. Just five decades ago, mainstream audiences found it acceptable to have a white actor in blackface on screen. In fact, that had been the accepted convention for playing Othello on stage for centuries, which is why playwright Lolita Chakrabarty wanted to look back to 1833 and a pivotal moment in theater history. May I present Mr. Ira Aldridge? Hello. One of the greatest gifts that Lolita has given to this material is presented this unknown story about a man named Ira Aldridge, who is one of the greatest Shakespeare actors of our lifetime, but no one really knows about him. It kind of saddened me that he wasn't remembered like he deserved to be. So this p feels like, you know, we're kind of giving him his due. Stafford Arima is directing Albert Jones as Ira Aldridge in Chakrabarty's play Red Velvet at the Old Globe Theatre. It's a memory play in which a 60-year-old Aldridge looks back to the groundbreaking moment when he became the first black actor to play Othello on the elite British stage. Imagine a theatre at that time. Gaslighting hadn't, was just being introduced. So it was candlelight, paraffin, fumes, huge spaces, 2,000-seater. In order to be seen, you would have to face front You'd have to speak out so that you could hit the cheap seats at the back, and you would have to make big shapes with your body, your arms, so there were all this gesture theatre. That was the context into which he came into acting. So what rules do you propose to break, Mr. Aldridge? I think if we trust each other, we'll know when we get there. So I may play how I feel? Absolutely! The play's concerned not just with issues of race, but also with a discussion of the craft of acting, says actress Alison Mack you get to see sort of the teapot style of acting next to a more domestic style of acting and the transformation of one style to the next. I mean, the show is very much about looking at how you can push the envelope in order to step into the next evolution of artistry and expression. There was an acting style that Aldridge performed in that probably was very similar to uh, Marlon Brando when he graced the stage in A Streetcar Named Desire. One critic describes, how can you describe this great actor? It's like taking water from the sea with a spoon. You know, descriptions like that, you just think, whoa, he must have been phenomenal. Oh, shared dangers with you! <laughs> well, it was a big deal because it went against anything that they had experienced, the London audience, but I think it also kind of shook um, the, the culture. I mean, he broke through one of the biggest barriers ever set for black artisans. So it was much larger than just getting on stage for a few performances. It, like, it affected people. And when he went onto that stage and inevitably performed the role of Othello, the audience goes ballistic. They got three standing ovations, like the crowd kind of ate it up. But not mainstream theater critics, whose scathing reviews ignored Aldrich's performance and instead focused on his ethnicity. But owing to the shape of his lips, it is utterly impossible for him to pronounce English in a manner to satisfy even the unfastidious ears of the gallery. To know that Ira's talent was undeniable, but still, because of the color of his skin, that there was um, an apprehension and a visceral kind of response to, no, we don't want that kind of a person on our stage. That disappointed me because for me, the arts have always been, and I pride myself on being part of a community that is open. But that artistic community of the British theater world would not open its doors to another African-American performer for almost a century, which may be further proof of how ahead of his time Aldrich was. Beth Akamando, KPBS News.